Howdy, Precal. It's Miss Kosh. Um, we are starting this brand new AP course. Um, I have tons of videos already for the Precal that I've been teaching for years, but there's been a few things that I need to add because of AP. Um, so we're going to jump right in and um, and see what we can do. So the to begin with here, it, a function is a mathematical relation that maps a set of input values to a set of output values such that each input is mapped exact to exactly one output value. Um, and then it says, in previous courses, you will have used the vertical line test to determine if a graph is a function or not. For example, down here with this, um, this parabola, we'd pass the vertical line, and if it hits the parabola exactly once, then it is a function. Um, we, it doesn't always work, um, but for the most part, and at this point in the year, we're, we're pretty safe using that. Um, the set of output values of a function is called the, uh, oh, excuse me, I read that wrong. The set of input values is called the domain, uh, represented by the x variable, or we might talk about the independent. That's the independent variable. Um, the set of output is the range represented by the y or the dependent. Um, I expect that to be a review. I would expect that you have seen that in Algebra 2. Um, so on this one, it's then they're asking us to do a few different examples. So they're wanting the domain of, of um, negative 4 to 4, and they're saying it halves each input value and then adds 1. So when I was thinking through this, um, I did this already. So I have my x value and then the function f of x. So it's going to take, so say we have negative 4, it's going to half that. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, and add 1. Negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. And then I'm going to pick two, negative 2 next because I'm too lazy to deal with fractions. I mean efficient. Um, so half of negative 2 is negative 1, plus 1 gives me 0. I'll start with 0. Half of 0 is still 0. I'll add 1, and I'm at 1. Let's do 2, and then we'll do 4. Um, we, this is not the only way to attack this problem, but I just thought I'd start here. Half of 2 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Half of 4 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Um, so I'm going to plot these points. I'm at a negative 4, negative 1. I'm at negative 2, 0. I'm at 0, 1. I'm at 2, 2. I'm at 4, um, 3. And it does have all of these. It's going to be this continuous line through them. Um, we could have thought, oh, the function has each input value, so half of x. So my function is going to take half of x and then add 1. So if you had gotten there just directly from that, fantastic. Notice our slope, our rise over run. We went up 1 over 2. We started, we had a y value, um, I mean, a, a y intercept, our b value, of positive 1. Um, this is an Algebra 1 review, but it's kind of worded in a different way, so hopefully that made sense. Um, the next one, all they've given us are these, what is that, five points, and we don't know anything that's happening between them. So we would just plot those points, negative 1, 2, I'm roughly in the right spot, 0, 3, I'm back to, where am I, 2, 3, 4, 1-ish, something like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, we don't know how they're connected, so we wouldn't want to draw um, any way to connect them. Okay, the average rate of change. Now, this is one thing that's new to me in the AP world. Not that average rate of change is new to me, but I've never emphasized it as in my previous pre-cal classes as much as they're emphasizing it now. Um, so they like to call the average rate of change the AROC, <laughs> and I saw that um, when I went to the AP training this summer. Um, so the average rate of change between any two points on a graph is the, um, it's the slope of the, of the secant line through those points, is the slope through those points. Okay, find the, of the function of the given interval, find the, find, okay, so find the average rate of change, I think is what that is intended to be, and then say, so that's like finding the slope between those two points. Now, there was something that I wanted to show you. I would think that we're familiar with this equation, that y2 minus y1 um, over x2 minus x1. What I want to show you is what would happen if, if I've got a point where it's, it's a function f, and I've got a point x, and then the y value is just f of x. Okay, let's say that I want to um, move one unit away in the x direction. So that means, so if this, say this is point A, okay, and then point B, I want it to be one unit beyond um, this x value. So then I'd have x plus 1 as my, my new x value, and my y value is now going to be f of x plus 1. 
So if I want to find the average rate of change um, between, sometimes I abbreviate between like that, between A and B, what I would do is I will take these y values, subtract them, so f of x plus 1 minus f of x divided by the x values. Okay, so since I started with this y value, I need to start with this x value. And I'm going to subtract away that x value. Notice what happens here. I have an x plus 1 minus x just leaves me with 1. We don't need to write a 1 in our denominator. We can, but we're efficient, so we choose not to. So this would be equal to f of x plus 1 minus f of x. So I have seen a few um, AP style questions that deal with this sort of thing. So what they're really asking us to do is they're saying we've got some sort of, I don't even know, some sort of weird function. And we've got some random point whose x value is at x. And then I'm going to add one more unit, whatever that is. And then I can find, now I'm finding the slope that's kind of terrible. But I'm finding the slope of that secant line that goes through those two points, where this is one unit that we've added right there. Um, we'll spend more time with this as we keep going. Let me see. Um, let's, I'll finish this page and then, and then stop the video. So on this one, they want us to find the average rate of change. So what they're doing is they're saying we've got this curve. We want to know what the average rate of change is on this interval. So we're going to find out, we're going to find f of negative 2, and we're going to find f of negative 1, and find those y values, and then do the slope between these two points. So when I plug in negative 2, I have a negative, negative 2 cubed plus 3 times negative 2. Oh, I'm writing too big. OK, whatever. Um, a negative cubed is a negative times a negative times a negative. We have those two would be a positive, and so then this stays negative. But then we're multiplying it by another negative out here. Oh, my goodness. That's a positive 8. Um, so this is 8 minus 6, which gives me 2. And then over here, plug in the negative 1. Um, negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1. A negative cubed is still going to be negative times a negative. It becomes a positive. So this is 1 minus 3, which is equal to negative 2. I need more space. Um, so now I'm finding I have, basically, I have these two points. I've got the point negative 2, 2, and the point negative 1, negative 2, right? Negative 1, negative 2. That was its x. There's its y. There's its x. There's its y. And I just want to find the slope. Or I could say it's um, f of negative 2 minus f of negative 1 over negative 2 minus negative 1 is another way to think through this. This actually might be more in line with what I've seen AP Precal do. Um, f of negative 2, we just said was 2. Uh, f of negative 1, we just said was negative 2, so minus a negative 2 all over, this is equal. Oh, I'm sorry, you couldn't see my work. Um, all over negative 2 minus a negative 1. I see a positive 4 over that's a negative 1, so this would be equal to negative 4, unless I'm crazy. It's the end of the first day, and y'all, I'm exhausted. Um, and, and that's how we would do that first problem. So the next one, it's a similar idea. We're going to find h of 1. We're going to find h of 4. Um, I'm going to stop the video here and let you practice that on your own. And let's see. Yeah, we'll stop there for now. Go practice. Good luck to you.